Hey guys, welcome back to BJ Tech News, episode 77. So today's episode, I'm going to go over Semantics Backup Exec 2012. Uh, there's been a big buzz within Twitter about this software. So I said to myself, why not download the trial uh, for 60 days, play around with it, and I installed it today. And it looks pretty cool. So I'm going to show you guys the step-by-step -step screenshots that I took with the installation process and hopefully on the next episode I'm going to show you guys how to configure and get it up and running okay so the first thing that you I did was I went to the site and I did the trial where now when you do the trial where is 60 days uh, you have to download three files uh, one file is about uh, a gig in size and the other one is about 910 megabytes which is another gigs and then you have to download this uh, batch file. Now the batch file, when you double click on it, uh, it basically locates these two files and combines it into one zip file. Now within the zip file, there's an ISO file which is about 2.3 gigs. Um, you can burn it into a DVD or if you're testing this out on a virtual machine, uh, you can mount the ISO on the virtual machine and there you go. Now I created a, a cool PowerPoint to show you guys how I did it, all the steps because again uh, I didn't know what I was doing so I had to do my testing first and I did, I did the screenshot so I can show you guys so the first thing that you do when you double click on it or when you insert the ISO or the DVD into the machine uh, you would get the home page uh, I ran the pre-installation first I just wanted to make sure my environment was up to par uh, when you click on that it takes you to this you click on this it takes you to this nice little welcome uh, you click on next uh, you got a local environment check or the remote environment check I did local because I wanted uh, the local machine was the machine that I wanted the server to be installed into uh, it ran the check now at first um, I actually was trying to test everything on Windows 7 machine uh, Windows 7 is not recommended and I and I tell you why uh, so I actually started installing it on the Windows 2008 R2 virtual machine and the operating system version check went away the only problem that I had was the DHCP uh, but again if I had assigned uh, an IP address to that machine I would never have that problem so everything had been green uh, once everything is good I went to the I went back into the home I went to the installation part uh, I want to do the backup exec install get this nice little dialog box loading all the installs and you get this you accept it uh, I uncheck allow backup exit to collect user uh, usage information I uncheck that because again this is only for testing um, okay now when I first started installing this on Windows 7 uh, typical installation was grayed out I know that was a problem right away custom installation was giving me problems custom installation only gave me the console part when I was unable to install the media server so that's when I went over to a server platform again I used 2008 R2 edition uh, and the typical installation was enabled and it was picked by default so I picked that and system drive checks everything is green so that means the operating system version check checked ok and uh, the DHCP was the only problem that I had because I didn't sign a, uh, a static IP address on the, the server Okay. Uh, I didn't have a license so I clicked on next and when you click on next it tells you this you're basically saying that you're going to be uh, using the trial wear for 60 days so that was no problem with me because again I'm only testing this stuff out uh, right here the username that I was logged in was SCCM admin um, I'm actually I installed the backup uh, software inside my SCCM uh, server I didn't have any other servers so I installed this plus the, the username that I'm logged in is this so I gave it the password, I hit next, I got this dialog box, so basically uh, the SCCM admin is going to be granted whatever access it needs for the semantic backup uh, software. I press OK. Um, my experience with this, I tried to go to the add feature and I was trying to add a machine already uh, that had an agent. Um, it kind of froze on me, I had to actually go to task manager and kill this and rerun uh, the installation again and I just clicked on next. That I will do. I'll deal with later and show you guys how I added a machine. Uh, click next. Get this an overview, an install, uh, summary on the installation. Click install. It took a while 
to install everything it needs to install and once you do that you get the finish um, you got three options checked off for you you got the run live update to check available updates I unchecked that and uh, view read me I unchecked that I only left the create desktop icon checked off and that's it uh, but I think best practices is to run the live updates to check if any available updates are for the software. For me, it's only for a testing environment, but for best practices, I will leave that checked off. Hit finish. Uh, you get a nice little survey. I actually un I checked to skip the survey. Everything is grayed out. Hit finish. Uh, there's going to be an icon on the desktop. Double click on that. You get this nice little dialog box, and there you go. Uh, the next thing that I want to show you guys is um, I was having some issues going and installing an agent on a machine in my Active Directory. It was giving me problems. So I took screenshots on how I install the agent. Uh, you basically insert the DVD or ISO on the virtual machine or physical machine that you want to install the agent. You get two options, and I picked the backup exec agent for Windows. Uh, you get two options checked off by default left that as B and installs everything in the install and that needs to be installed and hit finish and that's it now I'm gonna show you guys how everything looks now this this is the this is the machine right here that has the the backup exec 2012 um, media server I haven't back I haven't created a backup job as yet and I haven't configured the storage that's probably gonna be something that I'll probably do in the next episode but if you go to my backup and install uh, restore tab uh, my BJSCCM12 which is, is the machine that the media server is already installed and I installed the client on this now to install a client you know you basically go to add pick the option here double click on this you want to allow the backup to establish a trust uh, with the server hit next you can go to browse uh, you can go to your Active Directory and navigate to the computer that you want the client to be installed to. I had issues that kept on failing for me, so I basically had to actually go into the machine and install it manually. And then when I installed it manually, um, uh, the media server picked it up right away, which is pretty cool. Uh, if you go to the task manager, you see this is the icon right here that uh, is the agent on the workstation as you can see the security it's already talking to the media server uh, most likely the backup is really done for servers or file shares exchange SQL databases um, this is only a test only a test for the client so I could play around with but hopefully on the next episode I'm going to show you guys how to configure uh, the storage section and as well as create the first backup and start backing up stuff and also check out with the reporting and the storage uh, tabs uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode please right below this video there is the comment section please comment let me know what you guys think as well at the very top right there there's a subscribe button hit that subscribe button to get the latest and greatest tips and reviews um, and I catch you guys later thank you so much subscribe Thank you.